and so slimy. I'm gonna pick it up. It's why women live longer than men. Shit like this. That is not a jellyfish, it's a Portuguese man of war. Also known as a blue bottle. Also known as a floating terror. It's a species of saphonophore armed with millions of explosive stinging cells powerful enough to make Nemo an orphan and occasionally turn a person into past tense. This man of war is responsible for up to 10,000 stings in Australia alone and the venom can cause excruciating pain for up to three days. Leaving a nasty whip like well as a souvenir. But honestly, you're lucky if that's all you get because the venom can trigger an allergic-like reaction that results in throat swelling, heart issues, and difficulty breathing as you suffocate possibly to death. And fun fact, not only can they write your obituary days after becoming one, even tentacles that have been separated from his body contain enough venom to incapacitate you. Now, getting stung by a man of war is nowhere near a death sentence. Most of the time, if treated quickly, it's very survivable. But even though getting put in a coffin by one is rare, the agonizing pain that comes with it might make you wish it wasn't. As for why this man did this, either he didn't know any better, or he's trapped in a horrible marriage and this was his only alimony free way out. Either way, someone should check on him. I'm not even gonna sit here and pretend I knew what the f*** that was because I didn't, but after researching it, I have an answer. It's a deep sea saphonophore, and it's not just one animal, it's a group of thousands of tiny animals that band together and like a freakish hive mind functions as one. And yes, that means the man of war is a man of many, because as a saphonophore, it's also made of tiny smaller units called zooids. The ones at the bottom of the ocean are bioluminescent, but instead of producing blue and green like everyone else, this hentai comes to life glows red, and they use this light to attract prey like krill and copepods. Hive mind, there's technically no limit to their growth. What you're looking at right now is a 150 foot saphonophore that was found off the coast of Australia, and for a reference, the biggest blue whales are just under 100, making it technically the longest animal on the planet. Honestly, this sh makes me more uncomfortable than a T-posing squid. It looks like a squid. It looks like I'd have to switch to the hub if my mom walked in, because honestly, that would be easier to explain. They float around waiting for a victim to accidentally brush up against their tentacles so they can shoot them with paralyzing toxins, and they'll even transform their shape to form a net around their prey. You might be wondering if they're dangerous to us. Imagine this being longer than a blue whale and ask me again. A lot of y'all tagged me, so that is a black sea hare. It's the largest sea slug in the world, and since it can weigh up to 35 pounds, it's heavier than some dogs. And unlike most slugs, the black sea hare can't produce ink to defend itself, so instead it steals poison from the algae it eats. It stores this stolen toxin in its tissues, meaning anything that tries to eat it will immediately regret it. The reason it's black is because its color depends on its diet, which is why other slugs might be red as a result of eating red algae. And as a hermaphrodite, dating is a whole lot easier, since if one sees another, there's a 100% chance they're each other's type. And even though they can technically pitch and catch, it's usually the smaller slug that gives while the larger one takes. And as a slug, it's a gastropod, making it related to snails, and as a gastropod, it's a mollusk, making it related to clams, squids, and octopus. It's technically legal to have one as a pet, but I wouldn't recommend it, since black hair is extremely high maintenance and difficult to take care of. That's why I wear a hat. Okay, hear me out. I know that looks like the aftermath of a blue whale bukkake, but that's not what it is. It's actually a foamy substance called spoom, which to be fair doesn't make it sound any less dirty. Spoom comes from organic matter like seaweed and algae being churned by the constant movement of waves in the wind, which also forms a cluster of bubbles that stick together through surface tension. And since it's lightweight with low density, sometimes the spoom gets blown straight to the shore, and I promise you it sounds way dirtier than it actually is. And one of the main sources of sea foam are algae blooms, since all that material ends up getting churned. It's basically sea soup, and most sea foam is perfectly harmless, which is why you'll sometimes see people playing in it. But because the ocean is the ocean and there's no life without risk, some sea foam is toxic and popping the bubbles can release a toxin that can irritate your eyes and lungs. In which case, you'd probably be safer in a blue whale's love battle. What would happen if you took one of the meanest animals in the ocean and gave it legs? Well, two things. One, you'd have one of the most violently aggressive animals on earth walking on land, and two, I know this because it technically happened and they exist. It's a known fact that the biggest menace to society in the ocean are dolphins of any kind. They jump sharks for no reason, slap box their babies, and they have a rap sheet longer than Drake's. And the worst dolphin of all actively tortures other animals for sport. Dolphins and whales are part of a group called cetaceans, which basically happened because this guy decided he wanted to test his luck out in the ocean and evolved to become semi-aquatic and then fully aquatic. But funny story, there was a group of these land animals that actually stayed on land and about 54 million years ago they split up with the animals that would become whales and dolphins heading out to sea. The ones that didn't follow them out into the ocean stayed on land, and after millions of years of plot development, they went on to become one of the most vicious animals in the world. In case I haven't made it obvious, I'm talking about hippos. The African homicide horse is actually the closest living relative of whales and dolphins. One's a bipolar tank with Roy Ridge and a devil's overbite, and the other's a pufferfish abusing shark assaulting sea quagmire, and that is f***ing evolution. Other dolphins will sing to their baby before it's born the same way a pregnant woman might read to her unborn child. That way, when the baby dolphin's born, it can immediately recognize the sound of its mother's voice. Also, mother dolphins sacrifice sleeping. Baby bottlenoses and orcas are active literally 24 hours a day, and the mother's so dedicated that for the first month of the baby's life, she might not sleep once. Baby dolphins are also born with a mustache. Newborn dolphins will have a few hairs on the side of their beak, but they fall off after the first week. They get teased with facial hair and then have to be baby-faced like the rest of us. Most dolphins, like the bottlenose, will stay with the mother for the first three to six years before starting a life of its own, but some dolphins never leave. Not only will some orcas never leave their mother's side, they also can become really close to their grandmothers. Older female orcas will reach menopause, and once they can no longer have any babies of their own, they focus their energy on raising their kids' kids. 
She'll teach the younger generation all the best places to find food, and she'll even babysit her grandchildren when a mother dies for fish. Granny Yorkers are so good at what they do that grandkids that are raised by their menopause mothers have a higher chance of survival, and since orcas can live to 90 years old, that's a lot of grandkids. Yes, orcas get menopause, and it makes them the best grandmothers in the ocean. Remember that dolphin sound effect from Spongebob that was supposed to be like a sensor? You know what the f*** I'm talking about. Well, that sound didn't actually come from a dolphin. It was actually the sped-up laughter of the kookaburra. It's a kingfisher bird found in Australia that sounds like a guy trying way too hard to laugh at a cute girl's jokes. You may not be able to hear it, but when you double the playback speed, you can hear the sound that cartoons made you swear was a dolphin. Moral of this video, every dolphin sound effect you've ever heard on every TV show is really just an Australian crack tweet. The sounds of the raptors from Jurassic Park were really just the sounds of tortoises having sex, and the reason it chose tortoises is because they'll go at it for hours making a bunch of weird barking sounds the entire time. The Jurassic Park sound designer Gary Rystrom got the idea when he visited Marine World and saw two tortoises trying to multiply without a calculator, and he decided to record it. For some reason. Which is why the raptor kitchen scene in Jurassic was really just an audio file from Turtle Hub. But in the turtle's defense, if you had to deal with this type of nonsense, you too would sound like a sodomized antichrist. Hey, remember this nonsense, the Cheater Gator? Yeah, this was real and there was a time where it was everyone's problem. Its actual name is the Oari Pasukas, and his hood is in what is now South America and Africa. And the memes are true, he was a land op meaning he would run his prey down. Scientists believe the Oari Pasukas would have galloped after its prey. Luckily for everything around it, it was actually a mini-me that only grew to about 3-5 to five feet long and it probably only ate small lizards, mammals, and dinosaur hatchlings. Now, if this guy pulled up on you, it would be a very different movie. Caprosuchus saharicus was a 23-foot middle finger with teeth that looked like it belonged to a feral pig, which is actually why they were nicknamed the Boar Croc. And unlike crocodiles today, whose eyes are at the top of their head, the Caprosuchus' eyes were more lateral. You might not realize it, but that's very bad. Because instead of just hiding in the water with just its eyes above the surface, this assault weapon with teeth had binocular vision and depth perception, meaning not only was it catching bodies on land, it was probably chasing them down too. And unlike its smaller cousin, it probably clapped dinosaurs. And if Google's right, this 23-foot monster with boar jaws would have been almost as fast as Usain Bolt, and they would have attacked you by slamming their snout into you like a sledgehammer. The only reason they're not around today is even nature knows when it's gone too far. Here's every messed up snail fact because somebody said I couldn't. Some species of garden snail can have up to 14,000 teeth on their tongue that they use to slice food as it enters their mouth. The strongest natural material found in the world is found in the teeth of the limpets, because of course it is. Limpet teeth is considered to be stronger than spider silk, which was previously considered the number one, and this is what they look like up close. Freshwater snails cause over 200,000 deaths a year it's because they carry a parasitic worm that when passed to people causes extreme abdominal pain, bloody urine, and bloody stool as they become ingrained in your tissue. And if the worm's eggs don't find their way out, it can cause liver damage, kidney failure, bladder cancer, basically just shuts your body down from the inside. The cone snail is one of the most venomous animals on the planet while also being one of the fastest since they can strike almost as fast as you can blink. Cone snail venom contains a combination of up to 50 different toxins and since every snail has a different combination, there is no antidote if you get stung. The number of cone snail deaths is higher than reported since the venom is difficult to trace in the human body and the symptoms are confused for a common heart attack. Snails can sleep for years and one dead Egyptian snail was put up on display in a British museum only for it to come back to life five years later. How do jellyfish have sex? You didn't think you'd be asking yourself that question, but here we are. First, they release sperm and eggs through their mouth, and since they're not hermaphrodites like sponges, it actually matters what gender they are. The sperm and eggs join together to form a planula, which develops into a free-swimming larvae that looks like a flattened pear. After a couple days, the planula attaches to a firm surface where it transforms to a flower-like polyp, and it can stay in this stage for months, even years. And these polyps reproduce asexually, meaning like a red incel, they do it by themselves. They basically clone themselves because the polyps reproduce by budding. So the parts that were budded, you know, the little Spongebobs, yeah, those parts are what end up becoming this thing called an ephora. And the ephora becomes the adult Medusa jellyfish that you're probably used to seeing. And that's where jellyfish come from, the more you know.